Cutting the head off the snake is an expression that can be applied to a secret World War II German airborne operation designed to kill one of Nazi Germany's most effective opponents. The location was Yugoslavia, and the target was communist leader Josip Tito, the legendary leader of the very effective and numerous communist partisan movement, and a major thorn in the side of the German occupiers. And who better thought the Germans to perform this targeted assassination of an enemy leader than Heinrich Himmler's dreaded SS, utilizing its elite paratrooper force? Germany had invaded and occupied the Kingdom of Yugoslavia in April 1941, fearful that its leaders were pro-Allied. Once in control, the Germans dismembered the Kingdom, creating several new states or enlarging old ones. In the north, they created the independent state of Croatia, ruled by fascist dictator Ante Pavelic. Do check out the link in the end screen to a video I recently made about this character. Two large partisan groups also sprung up, the aforementioned communists, led by former Yugoslav Army Sergeant Major Josip Broz, known as Tito, and the Serb nationalist Chetniks, who also collaborated with the Italian and German occupiers. These factions also fought against each other. Tito's communists really benefited from the Italian armistice of September 1943, taking over Italian-occupied areas of Yugoslavia and doubling his forces to 200,000. As Prime Minister and Marshal of Yugoslavia, Tito established his headquarters at Drava in the Dinaric Alps. The Germans recognized Tito as one of the most dangerous opponents they faced, and huge numbers of German and Axis security forces were required to try and hold on to those parts of Yugoslavia which were still in German hands, remembering, of course, that Yugoslavia borders Austria to the north, the soft underbelly of Nazi Germany. So when the Germans discovered that Tito had temporarily stopped moving around and was headquartered at Drava, they determined to cut the head off the communist snake in Yugoslavia in a swift and decisive special forces operation. Alongside Tito was a British military mission assisting the communists with weapons, logistics and training, led by Brigadier Sir Fitzroy Maclean, and included Prime Minister Winston Churchill's son, Major Randolph Spencer Churchill. At the time of the German operation, the senior British officer with Tito was the unit's second-in-command, Lieutenant Colonel Vivian Street. There was also a large United States and Soviet military mission. Tito was well protected by a personal escort battalion, a large unit of combat-experienced partisans that could be expected to fight hard to protect their beloved leader. In the wider area around Tito's cave headquarters were between 12 and 16,000 partisans, all properly uniformed and armed and in distinct divisions. Any effort to get at Tito would require very hard fighting in difficult mountainous terrain. The plan was for the Luftwaffe to make a heavy bombardment of the partisan positions in and around Drava. Then the main assault would commence, a parachute and glider assault by the 500th SS Parachute Battalion, these elite troops either capturing or killing Tito and eliminating his staff and bodyguard units. Finally, a ground attack would then be launched by elements of the German 15th Mountain Corps, which would link up with the SS paratroopers. A Storch reconnaissance aircraft would then fly Tito or his corpse out. The 500th SS Parachute Battalion came about because of the success of Luftwaffe paratroopers alongside SS commandos under famed commando leader Otto Skotzeny in the rescue of Benito Mussolini from atop the Gran Sasso mountain in September 1943. It was decided to form a specialized unit of SS paratroopers, completely separate from the established Luftwaffe parachute troops for special missions behind enemy lines. Incredibly, 50% of the new SS paratroopers came from disciplinary units, with the rest volunteering from regular SS units. In November 1943, the battalion received parachute training from the Luftwaffe's Parachute School No. 3 in Serbia, in Yugoslavia, with more training in Hungary, where the battalion took part in the German occupation of that country. 
For the operation to snatch or kill Tito, the 500th Battalion was commanded by SS Hauptsturmführer Kurt Reibke. 280 men from the battalion, in three groups, would parachute directly onto Tito's headquarters, while a simultaneous glider assault by six groups would target the British, US and Soviet military missions with Tito and knock out his radio station, among other targets. The operation, codenamed Rossosprung, or Knight's Move, commenced on the 25th of May 1944. At 0635 hours, five Luftwaffe squadrons commenced ground attacks on the Drava area, including attacks by Junkers Ju-87 Stuka dive bombers. The airborne phase began at 0700. initial parachute assault, large numbers of SS were injured as they came down among rocks and on hillsides, while the 36 gliders also had problems with the terrain, suffering bad casualties from crashes. They were also widely separated. One entire glider full of men were killed by members of Tito's escort battalion. The Tito escort battalion fought back vigorously. SS assault leader Reibke would later be wounded by grenade fragments during the fighting. Reibke's unit was to fight its way into Tito's headquarters cave, but Tito wasn't there. He and his 20 staff escaped on foot as the German assault on the cave commenced. A second SS parachute drop was made about midday, but the SS were caught by partisan fire as they landed and took heavy casualties. What then followed was a siege. The surviving SS were surrounded by strong partisan forces and called in repeated Stuka attacks to help defend their positions. They also received airdrops of ammunition and other supplies from Junkers Ju-52 transports. The next day, on the 26th of May, elements of the 7th SS Volunteer Mountain Division, Prinz Eugen, fought through to the SS paratroopers, pushing the partisans back. However, the 500th Battalion remained in combat until June, when it was withdrawn for rest and reorganization. SS casualties were officially 277 men, with 61 killed, though many much higher casualty figures have been published down the years. The partisans suffered, according to their own figures, 399 killed, 479 wounded and 85 missing. Tito was successfully evacuated by the British, and communist partisan activities soon returned to normal. The SS raid was a complete failure, and the 500th SS Parachute Battalion did not attempt any more such operations before war's end. Tito would go on to serve as Prime Minister of Yugoslavia from 1944 to 63, and was also President from 1953 to his death in 1980. Interestingly, though born on the 7th of May, after 1944, he always celebrated his birthday on the 25th of May, in remembrance of the SS raid that nearly cost him his life in 1944. Many thanks for watching. Please subscribe and share, and also visit my other YouTube channel, War Stories with Mark Felton. You can also help to support both of my channels at PayPal and Patreon. Details in the description box below.